This is a potentiometer. He has three pins. It's supposed to be used sort of as a variable resistor. There is a left pin, a right pin, and then in the middle is a wiper pin. There's sort of an arc of resistance inside. And as current travels from the start of the arc to the end, you get more resistance the further along the track you are. So in this case, the wiper sort of acts as a marker to stop. So if we put the wiper halfway, then we're only dealing with the resistance to that point. If we put the wiper at the end, the, the current has to go through all of that resistive material. So let's test this little baby out. This one goes to 10,000 ohms maximum. So the idea is that we can turn it and wherever the arrow is, it's kind of, we could say a percentage between zero and 10,000. I'm gonna put in another resistor that will make sure that we have a minimum value. This is a 1,000 ohm resistor. So I guess I'll put the leftmost pin when we look at it like this into the resistor. And then the center pin, I'll put the LED and then put it to ground. So lights on, we have power coming into the resistor and it's going to the leftmost pin of the potentiometer and then coming out of the center pin, which is called a wiper. If we turn this up, oh, it's backwards. So we can see the resistance. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. So we're turning up the resistance, dimming the LED. So right now it's as if we had an 11K ohm resistor because we have a thousand here and 10,000 here, or, or we should. Just by adding this potentiometer, we're able to adjust the brightness of this light. If I wanted it to be backwards though, whereas we can control with the arrow how bright the LED is, I guess we would move it to the rightmost pin. So let me do that. Now nothing is happening. Okay, that didn't work. I understand this is how it's supposed to work, where the arrow basically means how much resistance. So we have zero here and 10K here. I guess if I move, if I shift the potentiometer and put the power into the center, then maybe that is, yeah, that's what did it. Interesting, that was kind of accidental. So in this case, we have power going into the center pin. Now we can see that the LED gets brighter as I turn it up. I'm gonna put it back to how we had it before. I'm gonna try and measure the resistance to get a visual representation. If we measure the resistor, so I have 0 0.98 thousand ohms, so it's 980 ohms. And what I wanna do is check it in series with this potentiometer. So if I check it again, then we still see it's 0 0.98. And now if I put it between the potentiometer, we can see it's 11,000 ohms. Let's see if we can clip these on and get a variable reading. So if I clip this one on here and I clip this one on here, then we can see it's at 11,000. And if I turn this down, the position of the center pin, as I turn this up, the resistance goes up. So at minimum, it re there really is no resistance provided by this potentiometer. We're at the 0 0.98 that we had before just by this 1,000 ohm resistor. But as we turn this potentiometer up, then we can see our resistance going very, very high, which will, of course, reduce the current going to the LED. And that's why the LED gets dimmer in this configuration. With Ohm's law, we know that the more resistance we have is the more voltage that's dropped. And I kind of want to get a visualization of that. So I want to set up the circuit again. And again, we're using this resistor because if the potentiometer is set to zero resistance, then we could blow up our LED. And I'm not going to lie, there is a part of me that hopes that one day I blow up an LED. Hello. One lead here. The next one has to go to ground. So I guess I'll just put in a cable here and just clip onto this. Let me turn off my light because this guy is really annoying. So we can see our voltage now. And if we turn it up and down, then I'm thinking we'll see. So this isn't working the way I thought it was. I thought that the voltage would go up and down. What I'm going to do is probably ground the potentiometer and see if that changes anything. All right, let's try this again. So now we can see the voltage that's coming out of there and it's varying a lot. And it didn't work this way when the ground was not in. I suppose because the entire voltage needs to drop across two pins and now we're able to have sort of another outlet where the rest of the resistive track can drop the rest of the voltage. So, so this is also a voltage sort of uh, divider, I think it's called, where we can control the voltage up and down from this center pin that we have, which is connected to the LED. Pew, pew. So we see voltage is 1.8, which is, I guess, what the LED limits it to. And here we're at 0, and then 1.8 down to 0. And if we remove the LED, then I assume we'll have the full 3 volt range, perhaps? Yeah, so now we have the, the full 3 volts available. So there are 3.17 volts, and we can go down to 0. Yeah, 0. So here we are at zero pretty much. And then we can go up all the way to three volts. So we're not limited now by the, I guess, the LEDs. 
So here we can see we can adjust the voltage of, of what we want it to be. So for example, if we have a 3 volt circuit, which is what I have now, and we only want a 1.5, then we could tune this upwards. And we can see that right now, if I can be a little bit more precise, right now we have 1.51 volts coming out of the middle wiper or the wiper of the potentiometer. So interestingly, we can see the arrow is almost directly in the middle because if we have uh, zero volts here and 3.3 volts here, it makes sense that this is now acting somewhat as a percentage. Let me turn back on my light. Uh, it's acting somewhat as a meter. Like this is around 50% and 50% of course of 3.3 volts is 1.5. So this is a really interesting way to control this stuff. I have our A-stable multivibrator from before, and we can see him blinking away. We know that as we adjust the resistance that's charging these capacitors, the, uh, these inner resistors, we can slow down or speed up the blinking. So if I take this one out, so we had a 10K in there before, and if we put in a 1K, we'll see how drastic the difference is. I mean, look at this guy over here. He's having like a seizure over here. By modifying our resistance, we can change the timing. And we can imagine this could be a clock signal or it could be any kind of circuit that we need an oscillator for, just an on and off signal. So what I want to do is put in some potentiometers here so that we can perhaps control this with, we can tune it as much as we want. I'm going to do what I did before where the 1K controls the maximum frequency, I suppose, in this case. And I'm going to put in the potentiometer. i got to move this green cable real quick. Okay, so if I put in this 10K potentiometer, we can see the blinking. And as I turn it, it should change. So this guy's going much faster now. And as we turn up the resistance, then we can see the, the blinking on the left starts to even out. And now we have a pretty even blinking again. So this one goes to 10,000 ohms maximum. What I want to do is use a different one. I have this kit here that I got this morning, fortunately, knowing that I was going to be doing this today. These ones go up to 500,000 ohms. So I think I'm going to try them. Let me open this up and see. Well, this is taking a long time. How strong is this little piece of tape? My goodness gracious, that took a long time. Oh, look, these look weird. These look different. So these little dudes look quite different, right? Um, they have three pins on the bottom and they just have this tiny little dude that we have to turn. Fortunately, I have a screwdriver, but I think it also came with one. Which is... So this guy is supposed to have 500,000 ohms of resistance. So that should really create a very visually different output here. So I'm gonna plug him in. We can see how slowly it's blinking. It's, uh, look at how how long it's taking over here. I don't even know what it's set to. So they sent this little screwdriver, but they didn't send anything that goes inside. Oh, I'm silly. They did. Cool. All right, so let's connect this. All right, so I'm going to turn this down, and let's see if the blinking speeds up. So it's much, it's much faster now, but much slower than before. We can see that with this potentiometer, we can really tune our circuits. Uh, pretty amazing. This one is not as user-friendly, but you know, it's cool. And another circuit that we made recently that this could be really, really good for is this guy who looks very messy. Wow, I haven't looked at it since that last video. Look at how terrible this looks. I need to trim all these. This was our long press circuit. The idea was that if we think of it as a long press button on a cell phone or something, we hold to turn it on. So in this case, I'm holding. So I'm holding, 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 holding. So we can see it takes a long time for this light to turn on. But we, what we can do now is instead of it just depending on this 100,000 ohm resistor, we can actually use a potentiometer and try to put this in so that we can now have more control. So I'm going to shift over just slightly the, the way the circuit is so that we have more room for that. I'm going to get a 100,000 ohm resistor so that we have the same maximum delay, but we have uh, more tuning. So the 100K is a 104. So here is a 104. So I guess what we'll do is we'll put a 1000 ohms here as a minimum. And then we can put this in uh, sort of backwards. And I, I think that's all we need. So let us turn it down all the way. I assume we'll reach the end at some point. So let's plug this in and see where we are. So if I press and hold, oh yeah, it turns on really fast now. Let me turn off. But there is a slight delay. So if I turn this up, then we can tune it to how we want it to be. A more, more of a delay there. That's pretty good. I think a little less is perfect. So we can just tune it. This is really, really cool. It kind of transforms the circuits and makes it kind of human uh, tunable.
you know, just with a finger turn, we can control what's happening in the circuit. We control how fast this guy is charging, how quickly this transistor turns on. I apologize for the mess. I know it's, it's really, really bad with all these wires everywhere. So thanks for sticking with me with this kind of thing. I should really trim these. So the difference I'm seeing between a voltage divider and a variable resistor, if we have pin one and pin two and then the wiper, then with a the voltage divider, we ground this pin. And this one is a power, in this case, maybe three volts. The idea for it to work as a voltage divider is whatever current travels through this little part right here is going to come out of the wiper. And since we know that resistance determines the voltage due to Ohm's law, we're going to basically just have a little bit of resistance and then be able to pull from that. And the rest of the resistance, since this is connected to ground, is going to be over here. So there's going to be a lot more voltage dropping here and just a little bit dropping here. So if we have three volts to start with, maybe this drops one volt. And then over here, we'd have two volts that goes back to ground. Well, it doesn't really go back to ground. I guess it's consumed in this resistance, in this resistive material. So as we move this wiper, we can just move our voltage up based on how much voltage is dropping across the resistor. And of course, if we moved our wiper all the way to the left, we're pretty much touching the voltage source itself and we're able to get all three of those volts available. And then as a variable resistor, we do the same thing. But in this case, this pin is really not being used. The only two pins that we're using here is VCC, our power in, and then our output, which is, I guess, our, our wiper. And in this case, depending on where the wiper is, so let's say the wiper is, is over here, then we're only using this part as resistance. So this is only our resistance. And there's actually no current here because there's no pass to ground. We're not plugging this in. So it's kind of like covering this up. And it's just a resistor, this value. But if we move the wiper all the way, then our resistor pretty much just becomes very big. And again, this only works this way because there's no path here. So there's actually no electricity at all going through this way. There's an, it's an open circuit. There's no way for it to get home. So all of the current needs to go through the resistance into our wiper. And we're just using this resistance to determine what kind of current we're going to have. One thing that Dillinger Gutierrez says, he's always offering really helpful explanations and advice is he was saying that we can connect this in parallel pretty much to a transistor, uh, which I think I understand the, the use there. Let me plug on my power. So if we get our transistor here, our 2N3904, and we connect it just anywhere, just as an example, then we know that the collector can carry more power and it is able to go out of the emitter. And I guess the idea is if we connect our three pins directly into transistor, then what we're able to do is essentially control how much voltage goes into the base, which will control how much current goes from the collector to the emitter, also controlling uh, perhaps something that takes more power that the transistor is, is taking care of. So we're able to use the control that we have with the potentiometer to control what current goes to the base, which will control what's emitted. So if we, if we ground this with an LED, then I guess what we're doing here is we're limiting the current coming from the resistor, but we can manually control how much of that is, is able to go through the base and out of the emitter to the LED. So now what we have is kind of what I was talking about before, where we can turn this up and the LED gets brighter. So that's a really interesting approach. And we could just imagine if this is anything, this could be, I guess, a volume control of, of music could be a motor, I guess, for the current to control how rapid the motor is, is working. So this is a really interesting setup. Thanks very much for the suggestion. My only question about this, though, and anyone who knows, and please respond, is I understand that the transistor, in this case, would be handling more current than the potentiometer can alone. Otherwise, we just use a potentiometer here. So we're kind of indirectly controlling the transistor with the potentiometer, or, or maybe directly is a more appropriate word. Assuming this this current or this voltage or wattage is too high for the potentiometer, and that's why we're using a transistor to handle it, what good is putting it in parallel with the transistor if it's going to just get the same wattage? I'm a little confused by that. I remember that Dillinger was saying that the transistor will carry most of the current, but does that depend on what we configure the potentiometer to? Is there a situation where too much current could go through the potentiometer in the setups? That's one thing that's not quite clear to me. In this case, I mean, I keep on using these boring LEDs. I really need to get some motors connected here so that we can do something interesting. But for now, we can see that with the potentiometer, we can 
control the voltage that comes out of it. And we can also control just the resistance, choosing, I suppose, whether to use uh, two pins or three. So if we, if we connect power and our load, it will just be a variable resistor where we turn up the wiper and it will add resistance to the track. But if we use all three, then we're able to get a voltage divider and really determine what voltage we want going through a circuit. So really cool, really useful, and really transforms some of our circuits to be human tunable and controllable. I'll definitely be using these in the future. Maybe we can make uh, like a motor controller in the future using these potentiometers. So we can give that a shot and see. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.